Welcome everybody to another life-changing episode of Home Kit Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara, here with the cat, the Mad Catter himself. Yeah, that's right, Mad Catter. Uh, Steven dresses up in a cat outfit on weekends and spits hairballs at unsuspecting passerbyers on the streets of Miami. It is Steven Robles. How you doing, my feline friend? I'm doing okay. <laughs> my entire family's allergic to cats, but I'm not. That's why I'm. Well, that's why it. you save it to weekends and all make it. Things are lining up. If people didn't figure out that that was you by now, now they know. Now they know. Oh uh, yeah. So we, we got some exciting stuff to talk about. I have some surprises for you. Uh, I'm not. Sure, you know, I don't, you might have some of these things, but I got to set up some new devices. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I'll tease her right here. <laughs> I put it right on the camera if you're watching. Oh, can't tell what that is. Um, so we're going to get to it. we got some news, too. But let's do some. We actually have some, a few five-star reviews from our faithful viewers and listeners. Thank you all. Tom from South Wales, UK. That's very cool. I double Z Y from the USA. Peter from Lincoln, Great Britain. And he was asking about video doorbells with HomeKit Secure Video in the UK. Maybe we can try and get that towards the end. Unfortunately, I think the answer is... I, I'm not sure if there are any, but we'll, we'll maybe put that at the end. Spoiler, Stephen. <laughs> Spoiler, yeah. No, uh, no luck. Peter's going to bail then, already on the rest of the episode. You just oh no, no reason for him to hang around. He gave us a five star. He's 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 with it. And then uh, <laughs> Gabriel Carroll, eighty eight from Great Britain, three from Great Britain and the UK, and one from the USA. So thank you all for those reviews. Now. <clears throat> We have some news here, and we got some devices to talk about. So first of all, I wanted to mention the Acara G4 video doorbell, which we talked about on a previous episode. There's been a fix now, a firmware update that supposedly fixes some of the bugs that I think maybe a lot of us experienced early on and people who have kind of jumped on it right away. Because, again, first battery-powered HomeKit Secure Video Doorbell. And so there's been some event recordings, updates, and now supports using network-attached storage from the Acara G4 video doorbell, uh, a fix for the issue where video on the home screen would show as black instead of refreshing, and cloud recording for the G4, and so a bunch, of, and then fixes for like micro SD card and other cloud recording fixes. So, welcome fixes. Uh, I know there was various reports of bugs with the G4, and I know when I tried to when it would ring and the video would show up on my Apple TV, it would like not have movement for quite a while sometimes it would just be a frozen thumbnail and so hopefully that firmware fixes it actually because i already had the logitech circle view doorbell i sent my akara g4 doorbell uh, to a friend and so i'm going to get their report on the bugginess uh, in a couple months and so i don't know if you've uh, i've not done so i don't know about the firmware update personally but i think you should do it if you have one for sure all right, and now, do you want to talk about the S8 Pro Ultra now or later? Is that like, that's like the big review, right? Well, we talked we we talked about this already last week, right? Yeah, right, right, right. We talked yeah, about so it a little bit. Is, yeah, this, is, this is our follow up, basically, so you guys can okay, read okay. Um, our 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 hands on coverage and everything of that, as well as watch the video. All that's linked down below. Um, I will say, like Stephen, I had a couple people comment on the the text of that. One of them was very salty that his Roomba kept getting confused and lost and said, well, this one is so much bigger and more expensive. I'd hope it would fix those issues. And I just want to, this is not Roomba. This is not iRobot. This is a separate company. Um, <laughs> iRobot also makes a very large and very expensive version of its robots. Um, but Correct. funny enough, He's dragging RoboRock for the S8 Pro Ultra being expensive, and yet when you compare the iRobot Roomba that has the uh, empty station that'll empty the dustbin, it's at ten ninety nine versus the S8 Plus, which has the emptying dustbin station, and that's at nine ninety nine. So it's actually cheaper on the RoboRock side, and Roomba doesn't even have an empty wash fill station that can clean the mop and and fill the dirty water remove the dirty water, fill the clean water. I don't even think right. they have that as an option. So I just thought that was kind of funny. The different companies, there's a lot of different great like smart robot companies out there. Um, someone also said that they had had the S7. And I want to know if you had this issue, Stephen, 
Um, okay. He had a version of the S7, and after a while, like a, a couple months of use, its maps started going haywire, where he would like see like the walls would no longer be perpendicular, and uh, there was like random gray spots that, on the map that it would like purposefully avoid, and he didn't know like don't avoid it, go get that spot. Like, those types of things. Mm. And I can say, so the whole point was coming back to the S8 Pro Ultra, was that he had not thought that I had reviewed it long enough to see if these issues were resolved. But for me, I never had these issues with the S7, and I've had that one since April of last year. And I've yeah. never had any of those issues. He said Roborock told him to clear his map data and create a new map, but then he had to, like, relabel everything and split the rooms, and it was very frustrating to deal with. But, yeah, for me, I never had those issues, and I definitely haven't had them with the SA Pro Ultra, it's been fantastic, uh, you know, overall. It definitely did a better job cleaning up smaller particles with the dual scrubbing on there, the extra motors. I have not had to detangle it, as I so frequently had to do with the S7 um, Max-V Ultra. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, have you experienced anything like that at all? No. I mean, I, I've not touched the map in months. I've had mine for almost a year also, and it's been working great I really don't have any issues with it. There was one time, I think, where it it thought the dock was somewhere else. And it was one of these things where it was running, it was in a cleaning mode, and it fell off, like it fell into a shower, like a walk-in shower. And I picked it up and walked it all the way back to the dock because I just had to go or whatever, and I figured, let me just charge it. And it got confused about where it was because it still thought it was, like, in the shower it had fallen into, and then it wouldn't find the dock. That was the only time there was some weirdness, and I basically had to restore the map, you know, from, like, the original time I ever had it scan the entire house. And once I restored the map, which, you know, kept all my labels and rooms and everything, it was totally fine. And so... I would only suggest is maybe if like if it is actively running and gets stuck somewhere, don't just pick it up and carry it across the house back to the dock. Put it on the floor near where it was. Let it circle around and figure out where it is and then let it navigate its own way back to the dock uh, because, I, you know, that was a weirdness that I experienced when I moved it myself. That's the only thing I ever experienced. It was only once and it was easily remedied. So. That's that's all. Do you I think say. maybe it just got like a mild concussion when it tumbled? Like it I think that, that might have been it. I should yeah. put a helmet. Um, that's what I should have done. Yeah, at least well, <laughs> like bumpers. Or, uh, I I have not yeah. had that. I have moved mine freely, and whenever I move it, it does the thing like finding where it is. And it like rotates around. But I have because I've had an issue before when we've left it out, and I would do something dumb like leave a toy or something, or so not a toy, but um a cord, like a really thin cord or something that it would uh, consume. And it didn't even yes. get like badly <laughs> stuck in there or anything. Cause it, it'll immediately just stop and say, Whoa, this doesn't taste great. I'm going to pause and I'm going to send an alert. But like we, it would be when we weren't home. So I would get home three, five hours later and it would be completely dead. So I'd have to pick it up and put it back on the dock and it would charge and it would be fine. Um, but yeah, I haven't had it like yeah. use its bearings like that and not be able to to figure it out pretty quickly even when it completely died but yeah i was just curious i had not seen those things i've really liked this one i think it's been a very good upgrade um compared to the s7 not necessarily worth like buying a new one for if you have like an s7 max v ultra because i didn't know this steven you can get you can get that warming air blower the sensual air blower i think is what it's called uh, for the S7 Max V Ultra, it's an add-on. You're not pulling my leg here. You, you, this, I mean, I'm, pretty, I'm pulling thing. your leg on the fact that it's called Sensual Hot Air Blower, but oh, it okay, is that, an that... add-on for like $150 <laughs> that you can get that'll prevent the bacteria growth and dry, and dry the mop on the S7 Max V Ultra. Well, I'll be looking that accessory up right now. I see, well, well, I won't, I won't research it like while we're... Well, maybe while you're talking about the next thing, and then I'll follow up in a few <laughs> minutes. But anyway... Uh, yeah, well, very cool. I, I still want an S8 Pro Ultra, even though my S7 Max V Ultra is doing just great. All right, so you put this in here right before we started recording. Samsung has some news or something. What you got going on here? Yeah, so Samsung is announcing availability of its TV lineup that we saw um, announced at CES. So let's see here. Where do these drop out? There's the my uh, 
So these are announced as of April 4th. So Samsung availability full 2023 lineup is now available, including the Neo QLED models like the 4K QN90C and the 8K QN900C. Eight. There's also the updated version of the frame, which, by the way, I saw the updated version of the frame out at CES. It's, yes. it's nuts, man. It is nuts. The way they made there that is. screen look so matte, it is, it is nearly indiscernible from just art on the wall. It's crazy. But yeah, this is exciting. The wow. entire lineup cool. from CES, I believe, is now available. All right, very cool. Samsung now available. 8K. My goodness. Like, I don't even know what kind of... Con- well, I guess for pictures, you know, if it's like a frame, it would look really high detail. But... Okay, so that was my question. And first off, you're, you're future-proofing. If you're someone who's like, yeah, sure, I've got 6000 whatever thousand dollars to spend on a TV. If you're ready to spend the amount of money, why are you going 4K? Like... Because you're going to have that. Sure. I would have that yeah. set for 20 years. Like, <laughs> I would not be upgrading yeah, yeah, for yeah. a while. So, like, if, you, if you're if you're about to drop that kind of money, I, I wouldn't bulk it going to, to 8K. But besides sure. that, they claim they have an insane upscaling engine. And I feel like that was a whole big thing when we had, you know, the 4K TVs come out and everything upscaled from um, 1080 to 4K. Right. They claim they've got an incredible engine to upscale, but they have a uh, partner such as like YouTube, I think, has a dedicated like 8K section that they're pushing out content free and paid uh, for those TVs. But yeah, you have two true. different options. Okay. 8K. Get all the Ks. Lot. Well, never mind. I'm not going to go any further there. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other thing was the Ember. I love my Ember. We have travel Ember mugs, the Mug 2. So what's the Ember news? Okay, this is one of my favorites from CES, and it will now yes. be available to order. Um, so the new Ember Travel Mug 2 Plus. The big thing here was they've added support for Apple Find My. So you can take a coffee mug with you yes. and you leave it somewhere. You're going to get a left behind alert. You're going to see it on the map. You're going to get um, you know, the ability of the Find My community. So if you left it at the gym uh, and someone just happens to be in the gym with an iPhone or a, an iPad or a Mac, it's going to probably get chance to back to you so you yep. can find that thing. Amazing. Uh, makes a, yeah. I, I bought my travel mug, I think, for the holidays last year. I bought it for my wife. And it was right before the Find My was announced for the second gym. So mine doesn't have it. But that's tempting. I mean, that's pretty cool. Find my integration. Yeah. Uh, It'll be like available it. uh, through Ember's website and uh, and Apple stores. Apple stores and Apple.com in stores. That's pretty cool because there's not that many products in that store. make it into store shelves. That is true. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, we got some projects and devices to talk about. Mm. But before we do, we'd like to thank our friends at ZocDoc. You guys have heard about ZocDoc. I love ZocDoc. Listen, if you're not feeling well or it's been a while since you've been to the doctor, don't be Googling symptoms or going on TikTok and trying to diagnose yourself. It's a bad idea. Okay, Andrew did that. He thought he had the Ebola virus. Okay, and that's, you know, you don't want to do that. And I, I don't think you do, right? No Ebola. There's not, that's not no, a thing. No, I checked. No. no. Yeah, he, he checked. You just got to swab your ear and you know if you have Ebola. But anyway, don't go there for symptoms. Find a doctor. And the best way to do that is by using the free, I'll say it again, completely free ZocDoc app. I use the ZocDoc app all the time. Again, you've probably heard me talk about it, but I just I did an annual physical recently a couple months ago, and I used ZocDoc to find a doctor in my area because we moved last year. I didn't have a doctor. Found one in the ZocDoc app. It's patient-reviewed, so I knew this was a good doctor. I could trust them. And you put in your insurance, your insurance provider and your group ID, member ID. You put all that information in the ZocDoc app, and then it will just show you doctors that take your insurance. This way, you're not like Andrew looking for an Ebola insurance doctor, okay? I don't think that's a thing. No, that's that's not no, a thing. You have to buy special insurance. Whole thing. Special insurance. The whole thing. <laughs> Especially bowl insurance, yeah. So don't do that. Put your insurance in the free ZocDoc app. Find doctors that take your insurance. You can find general physicians. You can find specialists. All of that right there. And book the appointment right there in the app, in person, or even telehealth appointments. Many are available in 24 hours, so you can go to the doctor like as soon as tomorrow and find one close to you. Love the ZocDoc app again. Find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app 
that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. So go to ZocDoc.com slash HKI, download the ZocDoc app for free, and find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash H-K-I. ZocDoc.com slash H-K-I. Well, thanks to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode. All right, we have a bunch of uh, projects and, oh, to talk about, devices here. Was yours the first one, the water guard, or was that me? Is that you or me? That was not me. That was not you. Okay. I didn't mean to do uh, the water guard. I meant to do the Eve Aqua. That's the thing that I actually put there. <laughs> I don't know why I put water guard, although I do have the Eve water guard, and that's wonderful. But I got the second gen Eve Aqua. I can't show it on camera because it's in my backyard, literally hooked up right now. But, you know, the Eve Aqua 2 has thread. This is the device that goes in between your water spigot and a hose to control it. And what's amazing about it is, in my particular situation, there's a, a spigot behind a, like, large piece of equipment in the backyard. And it's really cumbersome to get back there and, like, unscrew the, the water thing. And I was like, this is a perfect job for the Eve Aqua. So I hooked it up back there, hooked up the hose to it. And this is the hose we use if we need to fill the pool in case kids splash in it a bunch and some water, you know, gets out or whatever. And before, I would have to drag the hose into the pool area, put it in the pool, and then go back outside, climb behind this thing, unscrew it so it opens the water, and then the water starts flowing. And then remember to shut it off because I was very close to overflowing the pool one day because I forgot that it was filling. And the Eve Aqua is just so amazing for this because you could say when I turn it on, when I open the valve, turn off after a certain amount of time. One hour, two hour, and so I set it for one hour just to be sure. And now I can stay dry, get the hose, put it in the pool, go t tell Siri. I did it by Siri and just said, turn on the pool hose, turn it on. I walked away, turned it off an hour later, and it was amazing, brilliant. And so if you, I know, you, I think you use it for like irrigation and stuff like that, but if you have not tried the Eve Aqua and you have some use case for a hose somewhere around your house, I highly recommend. It's pretty wonderful. So. Okay, I've got two questions for you, Stephen. Yes. With the new Siri capabilities, can you say turn on the, the pool hose for one hour? Will that work? That's a good question. I will have to try that out. I actually just set it, like, in the actual device settings. Here, let me go to But then the you device. have to change it for each, like, time. Like, if you were – like, if, I, if you move between yeah, two different yeah. situations, then you'd have to keep changing it. Um, what I, I don't know if you've yeah, seen these before, Stephen, but they're super useful. Um, have you seen like the floaters for pool inflation? It sits on the edge yeah. of the pool with the hose attached and basically it's just a flotation inside of there. And when the, the water level drops, it turns on the hose. And then when it rises, it automatically turns off the hose. So you can just leave a hose connected to your pool and it will never <laughs> overflow and it'll never go too low. So you'll always hit the skip. Forget skimmers. about it. Forget about it. That's amazing. I didn't know about that. Yeah, um, that's really I, cool. I imagine Siri could do that. I will have to test and report back. But in the home app, this is not even in the Eve app. In the actual home app, you can set the default runtime as one of the options for the accessory. And so mm -hmm. that's what I have here, except for an hour. But really cool. Uh, it's the first time I really got it working well. No leaking either. That was the thing, too. I used the first version of the Eve Aqua at my old house, and I could never get it to stop dripping. That might have been an old spigot issue or whatever. But in this new use case on the new house with the Eve Aqua 2, no drips, no leaks. It's amazing. I, lo I love it. So, yeah, just want to say that. It's good stuff. Uh, now, nice. I got to start playing with yes. mine again because I'm building two new 4x4 raised garden beds and I always make, like, a pipe system that goes over and, like, sprinkles on top. So I got to start yes, wiring yes. everything up again because we're hitting warm weather, growing some yeah. strawberries yes. and jalapenos. And... Oh, oh yeah. all right. You got full on full on produce section out there. Very cool. I, I try uh, to yeah. do um, San Marzano tomatoes because they're really good for homemade pizza. Um, but they're harder to grow in the U.S. And then I do... Um, uh, cucumbers, like Kirby cucumbers. Um, and I do the jalapenos and I do some dill to make pickles because I like crunchy kosher dill pickles that are spicy. Andrew, 
You need to start a podcast, farm, farm life, farm life O'Hara, <laughs> something like that. I mean, you're you're doing like now I know you got chickens. You got your smart chicken coop with the door. You're irrigating. You're growing tomato. This is amazing, Andrew. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Um, wait till we get to the Rise Garden review because I'm looking at the lettuce oh, right now. Man. It is insane how much that has grown up there. It's so much lettuce. We eat salads like pretty much every day, and we still just have like an abundance of lettuce. It's so cool. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's pretty good. Wow, that's that's awesome. Uh, all right, now the next device I want to talk about. I don't know if you have one of these, Andrew. You tell me. But this is you already you're about to pull it out. Yeah, I know you already have it. Okay, well this is the. SwitchBot Hub 2. Andrew is literally holding it. How many you got over there? I don't know two? which is which. Which is which? Which one am I looking at here? This one? The one? Yeah, that one. That one. That's the one. Okay, yeah. This is the... We got some Matter firmware. Matter. This is like my first legit Matter device. This is the SwitchBot Hub 2, and it is the first time that you can pull in so many SwitchBot devices "Quote unquote natively into HomeKit because this hub supports Matter. This is a Matter hub, and so I got it. I set it up. It's got a little Matter QR code on the hub. I scanned it in the Apple Home app. Bada bing, bada boom. Added it right into the Home app. And the one device I really wanted to get into the Home app was the SwitchBot Tilt Blinds controller." Uh, it's like the little add-on thing that's, you know, it actually, like, grabs the little pole that will spin to open the blinds. And that was integrated with Siri shortcuts so I could ask uh, you-know-who to open or close the blinds. But now, because of that Hub 2, I actually have the blinds here in the Home app right there. You can see it. It's called Blinds Right because I have, I have two windows and I have yet to put up the left one. But I have blinds right, and it's right here in the home app because of the hub too. And uh, it is very cool. Adding it to the home app, fairly seamless. Uh, it took uh, like two tries, uh, but it is kind of like I think a beta functionality right now. At least that's what SwitchBot is saying. So, But I was able to get it in there. The home app sees the hub, no problem. I can adjust the, the device. So very cool. So thumbs up on this hub. Very cool for SwitchBot for doing this. I will say one weird thing is the home app does not display the proper open status for the blinds. So right here in the home app, as you will see, if you're watching at youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider, right now it says the blinds are open. That's incorrect. The blinds are actually closed <laughs> right now. And they are now with these blinds, you could say, Open, tilted down, open, tilted up, or just open. So there's three settings for tilt blinds. And in the SwitchBot app, it's very clear what that is. In the Home app, I have the slider to do it, but it only registers as open or closed. It doesn't have that third option, so it doesn't really know like what status it's in. Even if I like open them and close them a couple of times, it's just a little weird. Like in the SwitchBot app, they have uh, it has a different setting, and you can actually see there's controls for close up, fully open, or close down. Then there's the slider here, which shows that it's closed. Even the SwitchBot status up here says it is closed up. It gives me the battery and everything, connectivity. So the SwitchBot app has it right. But for some reason, in the home app, it's not communicating the open and closed status properly. Maybe that's a bug. Again, I think this is still in the beta as far as, like, the whole matter connectivity. So I'm glad the functionality is there. Nice to see SwitchBot add this hub with matter and getting into HomeKit functionality. Hoping for some bug fixes so it, you know, fixes that whole blind tilt uh, status thing. But it's really cool, and it's really fun. Have you been able to set anything up with it or any experience? No, I haven't gotten the new Matter firmware installed quite yet. Um, yeah, not yeah. for any other reason other than just been busy kind of cranking out some other reviews for um, Apple sure. Insider. But I did get something else Matter related. Oh, to show you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. I didn't you see wait. it. No, oh. I didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't grok it. No, it's blurry. Not enough frames. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. I see it's a light bulb. It's a colored light bulb. Nano leaf. Whoa, the Nanoleaf Essentials A19 uh, Matter Smart Bulb. What I thought was curious here, Stephen, was how they're actually putting on the Matter 
and the and home Apple. kit logos. Yes. So two things, two things I have to question is why, okay, why just Apple home? Like they don't have, I'm not seeing a smart things icon. I'm not seeing an Amazon dippy icon. Um, <laughs> None of those things only matter in Apple Home. So I don't know if they just saw some extra importance on Apple Home that they felt necessary to put the icon. Um, second, is this specifically separately certified for Apple Home? Did they go through the mm. MFI certification or is this just matter? I don't know, but I, I do have both a light bulb and the light strip going on here. So I got both these to play around with. Uh, these just showed up, so I haven't had a chance to, to try them yet, but next week I'm going to be reporting back okay. some more matter stuff. Very cool. Very cool. More matter stuff. Well, I have one other thing to talk about, but let me thank our second and final sponsor for the day, Collide. Collide has some big news. If you're an Okta user, they can get your entire fleet to 100% compliance. If How do they do it? Well, if a device isn't compliant, that user can't log into your cloud apps until they fix the problem. It's that simple. Collide patches one of the major holes in zero-trust architecture, which is device compliance. Without Collide, IT struggles to solve basic problems like keeping everyone's OS and browser up to date. Unsecured devices are logging into your company's apps because there's nothing there to stop them. Well, Collide is the only device trust solution that enforces compliance as part of authentication, and it's built to work seamlessly with Okta. The moment Collide's agent detects a problem, it alerts the user and gives them instructions to fix it. If they don't fix the problem within a set time, they are blocked. Collide's method means fewer support tickets, less frustration, and more importantly, 100% fleet compliance. So visit collide.com slash homekit to learn more or book a demo. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash homekit. Our thanks to Collide for sponsoring this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with a special guest to answer your listener questions. Andrew, who else has joined us on the podcast? Uh, Harrison decided he was done napping. <laughs> Uh, was it long enough for a nap? No, no, it wasn't. Uh, but he said he was done. So since I'm on baby duty this morning, while well, my wife ran to the store, he's going to hang out. So anyone on video, That's just amazing. to see little Harrison, his little, still, uh, not awake, uh, from his little, his little nap. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to slap Wonderful. me around a little bit. If, if you've <laughs> never seen this show on YouTube, now is the time, because this is Andrew's... Wait, why is my Siri talking to you? Uh, this is uh, his podcast debut. This is his first podcast ever. This is amazing. Uh, I'll pause it playing music now. Okay. All right, very good. Well, let's answer some listener questions, and uh, he, maybe he can help us with some of these. Uh, Ryan Off was asking about medication tracking, which in, I think it was iOS 16, medications are now part of the health app on your iPhone. You can track your medications, what you're taking, and all that. He wanted to integrate into shortcuts, which you can log health data in shortcuts. I have several for, like, logging weight and other things where I can just run a shortcut and it logs. And he was asking about medications. I double-checked in the shortcuts app, and there is not a way to do this. It looks like medications can only be manually entered, which kind of stinks. Maybe iOS 17, we'll see another shortcuts action. But <laughs> sorry, you're going to have to watch this last part on YouTube because I just see a baby... <laughs> Moving around the frame. Oh, man, this is amazing. No, it's great. Uh, so, yeah, that's all I got. I don't know if you discovered anything different, Andrew. Nope. That's about as much as I can yeah. find. It seems like this is a super odd omission. Uh, like, we literally have, like, lock screen uh, widgets to do this, and yet we don't have a shortcut action somehow. Yeah. Yeah, it's very strange. So, so hopefully sweet, soon. Because you could, like, tap it to a... Um, yeah. Uh, an NFC tag on like a bottle tap. So like you wake up in the morning, you could oh. tap on your medication and automatically log it. Like there's so many ideas there and I don't know why they didn't integrate shortcuts here. That, that, that idea alone, let me tell you, let me give you credit, Andrew. That, that was a nice use case. You just thought of off your head, holding a baby uh, who just woke up from that. I mean, you're just, man, that's, that's killer. That's great. See, this is, uh, this is the, all the different types of things you can log in Siri shortcuts and uh, I was focusing on my hand. And there's a lot of different things, but uh, medications is not one of them. So anyway, sorry about that, Ryan. Maybe next time. Now, Paul Collison was asking about spatial audio. Is this a question that uh, Harrison is going to answer, or are you going to answer this one? 
I don't know. I don't see the question. Ah, oh, that's a good question, Stephen. Let me see. Pull up my. I believe he sent me over an email. If I can email. dig it up. Email. Yeah. Well, maybe it was on Twitter because I'm not seeing it in my email. Huh. There it is. Again, go to youtube.com slash home insider <laughs> and see Andrew's baby. Well, while I look <laughs> for this real quick, um, yeah. maybe the Twitter notification because there are so many things on Twitter. Um, let's go to that last question real quick while I look this up. Okay, very good. Last question is home kit secure video doorbells on in the UK. This is Cameron Donnelly. And, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. This is two different questions. Video doorbells with home kit secure video in the UK. That was from um, Peter from Lincoln, Great Britain. We are both in America, and I'll have to ask William, maybe on the Apple Insider Show, uh, if he knows of one. But listeners, UK listeners, there's a lot of you out there. Four of you gave us five-star review just this week. Let us know if you know of a HomeKit Secure Video Camera. I assume it's because you can't get the Logitech Circle View over there. Maybe it's not sold in the UK. But uh, let us know, listeners over there across the pond, if there's a HSV video doorbell that uh, is purchasable, and then we can uh, let Peter know. And also, one other thing, a uh, question about it, is there a way to get an outdoor siren into HomeKit that doesn't require the full abode setup? This question was from Cameron Donnelly, and I actually already DM'd him back, but not that I know of. I mean, Akara has sirens that work with like, as a security system. They have one that plugs right into the outlet, and it can it makes like a 90-plus decibel sound. But that's all indoor sirens, not outdoor. So I do not know of an outdoor siren that is HomeKit compatible that isn't like part of the Abode security system. So unfortunately, I don't think that's a thing either. Andrew. Back in the field. Okay, so I did not find it. So I am sorry, Paul. I'm not sure no where that lives. Uh, if that came to send it, me. send it again. Send yeah, it again. Send it again. Hit me on Twitter or email. Send it again. It. But we did have a follow up on um, the Apple TV Apple stuff TV. that we talked about last week um, with the uh, the TV app not TV giving app. you options mm -hmm. for sources. So Justin Rasmussen sent in. Thank you, Harrison, for chiming in there. Um, he had two things. So first, he correctly pointed out another glaring omission with tvOS and the TV app. Apple created system-wide profiles for the Apple TV. For like everyone in your house, it's tied to the home app and everything. And when yeah. they go to the TV, they can switch their profile there and it'll do really nothing other than like <laughs> switching their Apple TV app watch list. Um, so but true. there's, as far as I know, and, and Justin agrees, there's no way to tie that into third party application. There's no third party API. So third party apps, you still have to log into each of them individually. So you go into Hulu, no. you go into Peacock, you go into Disney, any of these, you still have to like choose, which is really annoying because you'd be in the TV app. I'll hit play on Mandalorian and then it'll kick me over to Disney Plus, And then it's like, we're going to play your video. Wait, who is this again? And then you got your profile and um, it just makes no sense. Why create profiles that are literally only usable for that? And they're even like system wide. Like it's like they intend them to be used over the course of everything, but never implemented that feature. So uh, I agree with mm. Justin that that needs to be fixed. Um, they had an unrelated yeah. question, which was, are there any outdoor home kit cameras that run off of a standard 120 volt power? And they have two spots where they want to, two spots where they want to <laughs> run uh, security cameras over hardwired powered. And my answer is you can actually do that with most cameras that are hardwired. So my Eve outdoor cam, I actually have it connected to 120 volt power cable that plugs directly into an outlet. Um, it was very easy to, to connect, just tie the wires together. You can buy the, the 120 volt power cables off of, uh, Amazon with a grounding, um, plug on there, the third plug as well, and just connect them together and they should work. I mean, Obviously, clarification or um, my out here, I'm not an electrician. Don't trust me with anything. But 
it as far has worked <laughs> for me, uh, at least the way that I had it wired up. So that's how I have my setup is actually plugged into a power outlet. Very good. All right. Well, I think we got to all the listener questions, even while Andrew was bouncing a child on his leg. And so <laughs> kudos to you, Andrew. Thank you for everyone uh, for tuning in. Keep sending us your questions, the projects you have going on. We'll follow up with the occupancy sensor. Say hello to Harrison on the in the YouTube comments, making his podcast debut on HomeKit Insider. He can't really hear me. Harrison. He cannot hear you. Harrison, he can't hear me. <laughs> He cannot hear. He doesn't know. He'll probably look at the screen now. Very cute, though. Wonderful. Over here. What's that? I'm waving my hands. I'm waving my hands. Hello. (gasps) Hello. Well, he sees me. Hi. He likes that. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, thank you. Do you like Switchbot to Matter Hub? No. I think he wants my HomePod Mini. It's bright (laughs) and orange and right here. Oh. So. Oh, for sure. For sure. (laughs) Wonderful. All right, well, we'll let Andrew actually take care of his child. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Home See you guys. Peace. See you.